Hey, 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 I'm back, baby. You know what time it is. Get into it. Get into it. Yes. We're back. We're back with Story Time with Chris. Hi, y'all. It's been a while. I actually was in Cleveland two weeks ago now, visiting with my family for the Memorial Weekend holiday. And suffice to say, it was a magical time. I don't say that to be colorful. I was able to go see Disney's live action remake of The Little Mermaid twice. There's going to be a whole separate video about that and about my review and experience on how I felt about the movie. I saw it twice. I thought it was fantastic. I saw it with my oldest sister, Raya, on the premiere night on Friday and then Saturday night with my oldest brother. And I loved it. It was just, it was fantastic. It, it was everything I wanted for this remake to be but also gave me more than what I expected in certain areas of storytelling and character development and so on. So if you haven't, go see Disney's Little Mermaid. It's fantastic. Go see it in 3D. It's beautiful. And no, I'm not being paid to say this, so don't worry about that. And yes, we'll go ahead and get started. But we are back with E.B. White's Charlotte's Web. And no, I don't own the music that you're listening to in the background. Chapter 8. A Talk at Home On Sunday morning, Mr. and Mrs. Arable and Fern were sitting at breakfast in the kitchen. Avery had finished and was upstairs looking for a slingshot. Did you know that Uncle Homer's goslings had hatched? asked Fern. How many? asked Mr. Arable. Seven, replied Fern. There were eight eggs, but one egg didn't hatch, and the goose told Templeton she didn't want it anymore, so he took it away. The goose did what? asked Mrs. Arable, gazing at her daughter with a queer, worried look. Told Templeton she didn't want the egg anymore, repeated Fern. Who is Templeton? asked Mrs. Arable. He's the rat, replied Fern. None of us like him much. Who's us? asked Mr. Arable. Oh, everybody in the barn cellar, Wilbur and the sheep and the lambs and the goose and the gander and the goslings and Charlotte and me. Charlotte, said Mrs. Arable. Who is Charlotte? She's Wilbur's best friend. She's terribly clever. What does she look like? asked Mrs. Arable. Well, said Fern thoughtfully, she has eight legs. All spiders do, I guess. Charlotte is a spider? asked Fern's mother. Fern nodded. A big gray one. She has a web across the top of Wilbur's doorway. She catches flies and sucks their blood. Wilbur adores her. Does he really? said Mrs. Arable rather vaguely. She was staring at Fern with a worried expression on her face. Oh, yes, Wilbur adores Charlotte, said Fern. Do you know what Charlotte said when the goslings hatched? I haven't the faintest idea, said Mr. Arable. Tell us. Well, when the first gosling stuck its little head out from under the goose, I was sitting on my stool in the corner, and Charlotte was on her web. She made a speech. She said... I'm sure that every one of us here in the barn cellar will be gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of the goofs, she now has something to show for it. Don't you think that was a pleasant thing for her to say? Yes, I do, said Mrs. Arable. And now, Fern, it's time to get ready for Sunday school and tell Avery to get ready. And this afternoon, you can tell me more about what goes on in Oklahoma's barn. Aren't you spending quite a lot of time there? You go there almost every afternoon, don't you? I like it there, replied Fern. She wiped her mouth and ran upstairs. After she had left the room, Mrs. Arable spoke in a low voice to her husband. I worry about Fern, she said. Did you hear the way she rambled on about the animals pretending they talked? Mr. Arable chuckled. Maybe they do, he said. I've sometimes wondered. At any rate, don't worry about Fern. She's just got a lively imagination. Kids think they hear all sorts of things. Just the same, I do worry about her, replied Mrs. Arable. I think I shall ask Dr. Dorian about her the next time I see him. He loves her almost as much as we do, and I want him to know how queerly she's acting about that pig and everything. I don't think it's normal. You know perfectly well animals don't talk. Mr. Arable grinned. <laughs> Maybe our ears aren't as sharp as ferns, he said. 
which in truth, animals do communicate in their own specific way. It's up to us as human beings to play catch up and figure out the signals of what they're trying to communicate. <sighs> There's always a better way to communicate with people. Always. Chapter 9. Wilbur's Boast a spider's web is stronger than it looks. Although it is made of thin, delicate strands, the web is not easily broken. However, a web gets torn every day by the insects that kick around in it, and a spider must rebuild it when it gets full of holes. Charlotte liked to do her weaving during the late afternoon, and Fern liked to sit nearby and watch. One afternoon, she heard a most interesting conversation and witnessed a strange event. "'You have awfully hairy legs, Charlotte,' said Wilbur, as the spider busily worked at her task." "'My legs are hairy for a good reason,' replied Charlotte. "'Furthermore, each leg of mine has seven sections. "'The coxa, the trochanter, the femur, the patella, the tibia, the metatarsus, and the tarsus.' "'Wilbert sat bolt upright. "'You're kidding,' he said. "'No, I'm not either. "'Say those names again. I didn't catch them the first time.' "'Coxa, trochanter, femur, patella, tibia, metatarsus, and tarsus.' Goodness, said Wilbur, looking down at his own chubby legs. I don't think my legs have seven sections. Well, said Charlotte, you and I lead different lives. You don't have to spin a web. That takes real legwork. I could spin a web if I tried, said Wilbur, boasting. I've just never tried. Let's see you do it, said Charlotte. Fern chuckled softly, and her eyes grew wide with love for the pig. Okay, replied Wilbur, you can coach me, and I'll spin one. It must be a lot of fun to spin a web. How do I start? Take a deep breath, said Charlotte, smiling. Wilbur breathed deeply. Now climb to the toppest, highest place you can get to, like this. Charlotte raced up to the top of the doorway. Wilbur scrambled to the top of the manure pile. Very good, said Charlotte. Now make an attachment with your spinnerets, hurl yourself into space, and let out a drag line as you go down. Wilbur hesitated a moment, then jumped out into the air. He glanced hastily behind to see if a piece of rope was following him to check his fall, but nothing seemed to be happening in his rear, and the next day he knew he landed with a thump. Oof! He grunted. Charlotte laughed so hard her web began to sway. What did I do wrong? asked the pig when he recovered from his bump. Nothing, said Charlotte. It was a nice try. I think I'll try again, said Wilbur cheerfully. I believe what I needed is a little piece of string to hold me. The pig walked out to his yard. You there, Templeton? He called. The rat poked his head out from under the trough. Got a little piece of string I could borrow? Asked Wilbur. I needed to spin a web. Yes, indeed, replied Wilbur, who saved string. <laughs> replied Templeton, who saved string. <laughs> no trouble at all. Anything to oblige. He crept down into his hole, pushed the goose egg out of the way, and returned with an old piece of dirty white string. Wilbur examined it. That's just the thing, he said. Tie one end to my tail, will you, Templeton? Wilbur crouched low with his thin, curly tail toward the rat. Templeton seized the string, passed it around the end of the piglet's tail, and tied two half inches. Half hitches, excuse me. Charlotte watched in delight. Like Fern, she was truly fond of Wilbur, whose smelly pen and stale food attracted the flies that she needed, and she was proud to see that he was not a quitter and was willing to try again to spin a web. While the rat and the spider and the little girl watched, Wilbur climbed again to the top of the manure pile, full of energy and hope. Everybody watch, he cried, and summoning all his strength, he drew himself into the air head first. The string trailed behind him, but as he had neglected to fasten the other end to anything, it didn't really do any good, and Wilbur landed with a thud, crushed and hurt. Tears came to his eyes. Templeton grinned. Charlotte just sat quietly. After a bit, she spoke. You can't spin a web, Wilbur, and I advise you to put the idea out of your mind. You lack two things needed for spinning a web. What are they? asked Wilbur sadly. You lack a set of spinnerets, and you lack know-how. But cheer up, you don't need a web. Zuckerman supplies you with three big meals a day. Why should you worry about trapping food? Wilbur sighed. You're ever so much cleverer and brighter than I am, Charlotte. I guess I was just trying to show off. Serves me right. 
Templeton untied his string and took it back to his home. Charlotte returned to her weaving. "'You needn't feel too badly, Wilbur,' she said. "'Not many creatures can spin webs. "'Even men aren't as good as, it, as spiders, although they think they're pretty good. "'And they'll try anything. "'Did you ever hear of the Queensboro Bridge?' "'Wilbur shook his head. "'Is it a web?' Sort of, replied Charlotte, but did you know how long it took men to build it? Eight whole years. My goodness, I would have starved to death waiting that long. I can make a web in a single evening. What do people catch in the Queensboro Bridge? Bugs? asked Wilbur. No, said Charlotte, they don't catch anything. They just keep trotting back and forth across the bridge, thinking there's something better on the other side. If they hang head down at the top of the thing and wait quietly... Maybe something good would come along, but no. With man, it's rush, rush, rush. Every minute, I'm glad I'm a sedentary spider. What does sedentary mean? asked Wilbur. Means I sit still a good part of the time and don't go wandering all over creation. I know a good thing when I see it. My web is a good thing. I stay put and wait for what comes. Gives me a chance to think. Well, I'm sort of sedentary myself, I guess, asked the pig. I have to hang around here whether I wanna, want to or not. You know where I'd really like to be this evening? Where? In a forest looking for beech nuts and truffles and delectable roots, pushing leaves aside with my wonderful strong nose, searching and sniffing along the ground, smelling, smelling, smelling. "'You smell just the way you are,' <laughs> remarked a lamb who had just walked in. "'I can smell you from here. You're the smelliest creature in the place.' Wilbur hung his head. His eyes grew wet with tears. Charlotte noticed his embarrassment. She spoke sharply to the lamb. "'Leave Wilbur alone,' she said. "'He has a perfect right to smell, considering his surroundings. "'You're no bundle of sweet peas yourself. "'Furthermore, you are interrupting a very pleasant conversation.' What were we talking about, Wilbur, before we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, I don't remember, said Wilbur. It doesn't make any difference. Let's not talk any more. For a while, Charlotte, I'm getting sleepy. You go ahead and finish fixing your web, and I'll just lie here and watch you. It's a lovely evening. Wilbur stretched out on his side. Twilight settled over Zuckerman's barn, and a feeling of peace. Fern knew it was almost supper time, but she couldn't bear to leave. Swallows passed on silent wings in and out of the doorways, bringing food to their young ones. From across the road, a bird sang, Whippoorwill, Whippoorwill. <whistles> Lurvy sat down under an apple tree and lit his pipe. The animals sniffed the familiar smell of strong tobacco. Wilbur heard the trill of the tree toad and the occasional slamming of the kitchen door. All these sounds made him feel comfortable and happy, for he loved life and loved to be a part of the world on a summer evening. But as he lay there, he remembered what the old sheep had told him. The thought of death came to him. He began to tremble with fear. Charlotte, he said softly. Yes, Wilbur? I don't want to die. Of course you don't, said Charlotte in a comforting voice. I just love it here in the barn, said Wilbur. I love everything about this place. "'Of course you do,' said Charlotte. "'We all do.' The goose appeared, followed by her seven goslings. They thrust their little necks out and kept up a musical whistling like a tiny troop of pipers. Wilbur listened to the sound with love in his heart. "'Charlotte,' he said. "'Yes,' said the spider. "'Were you serious when you promised you would keep them from killing me?' "'I was never more serious in my life. "'I am not going to let you die, Wilbur.' "'How are you going to save me?' asked Wilbur, whose curiosity was very strong at this point. "'Well,' said Charlotte vaguely, "'I don't really know, but I'm working on a plan.' "'That's wonderful,' said Wilbur. "'How's the plan coming, Charlotte? Have you gotten very far with it? Is it coming along pretty well?' Wilbur was trembling again, but Charlotte was cool and collected. "'Oh, it's coming along,' she said lightly. "'The plan is still in its early stages and hasn't completely shaped up yet, but I'm working on it.' "'When do you work on it?' begged Wilbur. "'When I'm hanging head down at the top of my web. "'That's when I do my thinking, because then all the blood is in my head.' "'I'd be only too glad to help in any way I can.' "'Oh, I'll work it out alone,' said Charlotte. "'I can think better if I think alone.' "'All right,' said Wilbur. "'But don't forget fail to let me know if there's anything I can do to help, no matter how slight.' 
Well, replied Charlotte, you must try to build yourself up. I want you to get plenty of sleep and stop worrying. Never hurry and never worry. Chew your food thoroughly, eat every bit of it, except you must leave just enough for Templeton. Gain weight and stay well. That's the way you can help. Keep fit and don't lose your nerve. Do you think you understand? Yes, I understand, said Wilbur. Go along to bed, then, said Charlotte. Sleep is important. Wilbur trotted over to the darkest corner of his pen and threw himself down, he closed his eyes. In another minute he spoke. Charlotte, he said. Yes, Wilbur? May I go to my trough and see if I left any of my supper? I think I just had a tiny bit of mashed potato. Very well, said Charlotte, but I want you in bed again without delay. Wilbur started to race out to his yard. Slowly, slowly, said Charlotte. Never hurry and never worry. Wilbur checked himself and crept slowly to his trough. He found a bit of potato, chewed it carefully, swallowed it, and walked back to bed. He closed his eyes and was silent for a while. Charlotte, he said in a whisper. Yes? May I get a drink of milk? I think there are a few drops of milk left in my trough. No, the trough is dry, and I want you to go to sleep. No more talking. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Wilbur shut his eyes. Fern got up from her stool and started for her home, her mind full of everything she had seen and heard. Good night, Charlotte, said Wilbur. Good night, Wilbur. There was a pause. Good night, Charlotte. Good night, Wilbur. Good night. Good night. And that is where we will end for today. Thank you so very much, y'all. I do appreciate you all who tune in consistently, who show me love and support. I don't do this for profit. This is my way of getting kids as well as adults excited about the magic of literature. And you can always join us for our Sunday readings later in the evening, probably around six consistently uh, for Charlotte's Web, because we'll be reading another book once that book is finished. <clears throat> and then, of course, don't miss out on the Castle of Lear on Facebook Monday, Wednesday, and then a series of unfortunate events Tuesday, Thursday on Instagram. Castle of Lear is on Facebook. Series of unfortunate events is on Instagram. And without further ado, I wish you all a beautiful night. Bye, y'all.